Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Midweek Trio. And we're joined by Matt today because we've been doing loads of stuff. Yeah, it's still really mucky from doing lots of stuff as well. <laughs> so, don't know which order the video is going to come out in, but you'll work out what we've been doing. Um, so, in this week's Midweek Trio, as the title suggests, is it better, easier, cheaper, whatever you want to put it, to have a tax exempt classic vehicle as your daily or a modern vehicle? And that is a question what we're dealing with at the moment. <laughs> so, I think we should fire away. What's your views on that? I am in two minds about it because my daily driver is a 2016 Outlander hybrid, um, tax exempt. But as myself and many others have found at the moment, the cost of insurance on pretty much all cars has just gone through the roof. Yeah. So, is it cheap? Well, it is cheaper to insure a classic car. So is it in the long run cheaper to deal with a classic car rather than a more modern car? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing to look at from what Matt's saying there is, it's the cost. Yeah. It's the cost of saving money on tax. Okay, Matt's is different because this is obviously EV. It's not tax, paying tax on it, but it's saving tax and then running an old vehicle, therefore more likely to have repairs rolling repairs, mm -hmm. does that outweigh it? I think for me, if I was to put my perspective on it, the fact, f I like driving the 940 daily, okay, I might have to do a bit more maintenance to it, and okay, it's thirsty, and okay, I pay more tax, but that car's not depreciating, it's only going one way in value, and that's my, my plus on it, I think. Yeah. I think the depreciation on a vehicle, it bugs the hell out of me. Ask Mrs. Yeah. S if you ever see her. <laughs> I, I get if I buy a modern vehicle, I have it for a month or two, and I get so bored of it, and I get so angry with the fact that I'm losing money on it, it's gone. And that's why I have so many classic turds around me. That kind of thing is <laughs> if you're a bit more petrol head as well. I mean, I only got what I've got now because at the job I was with at the time yeah. it was local, so I could use it on battery and things like that, and charge it up, and it'd be fine. It worked out cheaper. Mm. But being a bit of a petrol head anyway, we always want something a little bit different, yeah, and something you can modify a bit, something you can personalise. Now, could you, I mean, I love it, that car, it's dead comfortable, it's a lovely long car. journeys yeah. in it. Could I get rid of that and go into a classic car as a day away with no cruise control, noisy, smelly? I probably could. For you as well, and I think it's important to point that out, is you have a daily work van, a company vehicle. Yeah. And I currently yeah. have that as well. Um, so my daily cars, daily cars, will get used to come to the workshop at the weekends or go out to shows or go do my normal stuff like go to the shops will get done in an old car. Yeah. And you, I guess at the weekends, you use your Phoenix a lot and yeah. things like that. So that's MAT tax exempt. If you look at it that way, it's... It's well, down to personal preference as well. I, yeah, we've, we've sat at this conversation and we thought this should be the midweek trio. <laughs> and um, so we thought you'd bring you guys in. What do you guys think about that? For me, it's the depreciation thing. And for Matt, it's the being able to personalise it, being a petrol head and actually enjoy your car a bit. And the cost wise yeah. for being insurance. Yes, this is the big elephant in the room. So mm. we've both recently had our renewals come through and had to reinsure our vehicles. Um, the company I was with had all my cars on one policy uh, and they got rid of my, their, their company as a whole got rid of um, the agreed values. And I wouldn't own a classic vehicle without an agreed value anymore. I just think it's not worth it in the day and age now. So I obviously left with them, but I left the Volvo with them because I've got a lot of no claims on it and we're going forward with it. But that one car alone is costing me more to insure than all three I had insurance on short last year. Yeah. And Matt's noticed the same and we've got a, a good group chat going along with us a lot and we're all in the same predicament that insurance has definitely gone up. Yeah. So how does that work? I mean, I tried insuring just a standard 1300 minute up the Cooper, just as a standard car and that came in half the price of the Outlander. Mm. Um, I know for a fact that I'm in the Phoenix, cost me about 100, 100-ish pound a year. So running a classic on that type of things, and I think on a classic you're only allowed a certain mileage, I think. Yeah, you are limited mileage. So many miles, but yeah. if you want, if you're a person like me who, you only do short miles anyway. Yeah, it works for you. It works. 
Yeah. So, yeah, if you're doing long distances and stuff like that, then yeah, you're going to need a more modern, fuel efficient car. But if you're only doing short distances and stuff like that, mm. you could probably get away with running a couple of classics. Yeah. Or older cars. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think there's two, two or three aspects there, isn't there? Mm. To really, really think about. It's the cost of insurance. Yeah. It's very different insuring an old vehicle, classic vehicle, than insuring a modern vehicle. Um, just various aspects of the cost of it to be damaged or needing repair or stolen. Like yeah. the Outlander is incredibly expensive to build, as in the battery and stuff mm. like that. But a classic car is one of them, replace it. It might be really unique. Uh, there's, the, there's that, there's the depreciation, mm -hmm. which I think is a big factor. Is a um, for what we do on YouTube, creating content, you have to really think about when you bring a car in as a project, if it's a car you're not planning on keeping, what's the value of it at the end? Because no one wants to lose money on a car. Yeah. And we have to think about that. Um, and while we're on that subject, we're part of what we're talking about now is we're trying to clear the workshop a little bit to get some cars out. Um, and the idea of this is we could potentially do this. Could yeah. we? we could get some tax exempt vehicles and each of us run around in them for a bit because they should in theory be cheap to run. Mm. We, you know we are keep on top of maintenance because we do it to show you. Yeah. So I think it's food for thought, isn't it? it? Is. It's a debate yeah. we've been having. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we'd like to know what you guys think. So please comment away. Um, if you could, my eyelids is right, your commute's right, whatever. Um, you can obviously have all different shapes and sizes of vehicle, classic vehicles. Mm -hmm. For me, classic estate would be, be perfect. perfect. Yeah, it's got to be <laughs> so, a double wagon. Yeah, so it would be absolutely perfect. So. Would, you, would it work for you? Would, would it fit in with your life? Or would you just be like, I just want a turnkey, drive a car, not worry about anything? You know, it's it's a real big personal preference, I think. It's one other thing you've got to think about as well. The guys that are down south or other parts of the country that are for the uh, US and stuff like that. Yes, yeah. Could you guys run a classic tax exempt, MLT yeah. exempt car and still get away with it? Yeah. Yeah, because I think uh, my brother, for our sake, he owns a V8 classic Mustang, which I'm still yet to get on the channel because he won't let me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's actually exempt. Yeah. You can I mean. drive a five litre V8 around, whereas a diesel Passat, say for arm's sake, will get charged. In 19, coming up to 1984, yeah. vehicles, which is really depressing, really. Which, really which are tax exempt now. Are tax exempt, or coming up to tax yeah. exempt. So there are, if you look at that age of car, there are some decent stuff out there that's still yeah, so, reliable. Yeah, so we're throwing them built. around. Uh, you got all your Mark 1, 2 Golfs. You've got your Escorts of that era, yeah. uh, you've got your Astras of that era, all quite fast, hot hatchy kind of cars. You've got yeah. probably your Audi 100s maybe coming to that. So you've so got your Audi early Quattro stuff. Yeah. All of that's becoming tax and exempt now. Um, so there's that to think about in the cost of running, I think. Mm. What do you guys think? Comment away. So the next part of this is your questions. Hence why they have a midweek trio. So the first question is from Ian Campbell. Uh, so he has his own channel as well, so go and check that out. First one is a difficult, could be a difficult one for us, is if you were to bring a Mini back from the IMM, what would you drive home? Ooh. So I'll let Matt fire away. If you could bring a unique European Mini home. Uh, You've done a few more items than me, really. In a Trenta. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're both in agreement with that. Cooper X4. Yeah, well, um, you have to be if, you, if you're driving on the continent. You yeah. want something to drive on the correct side. Definitely. So yeah, and they're just a bit more unique, aren't they? These beautiful interiors, yeah. nice and plush. Yeah, I think we're both we nailed that. Pass yeah. that one over. Perfect. Next question, guys. What's your guilty pleasure? Oh, God. <laughs> Can we talk about that? Probably not. <laughs> So this question is from Jackman. So you will see Jackman in quite a few videos coming up actually, because he is filming content on his Volvo 244. Um, so please give him a bit of love in the comments and stuff like that. If you like the Volvo and he's got a little classic mini as well. Uh, he also has an Amazon, which is behind the camera. Um, I'm gonna pick one of his questions as my finger is now healing up nicely. What is your worst car related injury? <laughs> um, off, I'll lead on that one. So I think mine is walking across a workshop Incredibly dirty workshop. I won't name names whose workshop it is because the company actually doesn't exist anymore. I slipped, caught a rusty car, and I had 16 stitches around my hand there. That's probably my worst one. Yeah. That was a bit painful. What about you? Um, working on a um, refuse vehicle. 
I'm changing a hydraulic cylinder on one of those and they are heavy and getting your finger stuck between the eye of the hydraulic round when it falls on your finger. Oh, that's not nice. Yeah, they want, it was a bit flat. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine now, it's yeah. fine. We both survived both of them, but yeah, they're probably, yeah, they're quite bad injuries, aren't they? Yeah. So, the last question of the trio. So, last question for this week is from Mission Mini. Now, Mission Mini has a YouTube channel as well. It's got quite a cool K-series swap mini. And I think they've got a Morris Minor of an MX-5 engine in it, which is quite cool. Um, his question is, if you were to do an engine swap on a classic mini, what engine swap would it be? Ooh. Now, get aside all the taxation stuff we've been talking about recently. Yeah. This is purely if you could do it, and none of that stuff, none of that nonsense was there. None of the DVDs, none of the SVAs and all that. Yeah, all none of the stuff trying to ruin your life there. What would it be? Ah, oh, no. If you could actually make it fit and make it work, I'd probably put a V6 in the back. Because just the what, noise. What, like a mini estate? Is mini estate, right? yeah. I've got a V6 because there's some noise, I love the noise of the V6. Oh, that's an interesting one. Ooh. I'd like to say I'd like to put a Volvo engine in a mini, but I think, <laughs> I think someone has done that. It's, it's just, no, it doesn't work. I think from seeing different stuff that's done, I'm not a motorbike person at all, really. I don't like, you like your bikes, oh, I, I, I don't like my bikes. Um, but I do really like the packaging of a motor, motorbike engine, and you can turbo them and all sorts, mm. in the front of a Mini. I like the fact, that, I like the fact that it fits in there, mm. and it has a sequential box, it's tiny, it's light, still low CC, so obviously you lose your taxation class getting back into that, yeah. but it's still like 1 litre 1.3, so it's still relatively cheap to run. Mm -hmm. It's that sound. Yeah, screaming through them gears yeah. and I like the fact you can package them in the front now I couldn't do an IMM anymore like that though no I don't <laughs> think that would be very good no yeah. so yeah I think that answers some questions pretty yeah, well doesn't it question. thank you very much for your questions everyone remember link in the description below for our sponsors we've got mini mine there's a discount on the screen now Terms set off when you spend fifteen pound or more, and then obviously we've got frost restoration. A few tools consumables. There is discount code for them guys as well. So go and check them out. Um, also, while you're there, viewers are not. Sorry, fifty-four percent of viewers are not subscribed. Half of you. Half. Half. Yeah. Over half. Press the button. Please press the button, guys. Give this video a thumbs up, and make sure you put in the comments below what question you'd like us to ask, and what do you think about what we've said? Would you daily a classic car? Because I think it's quite interesting. Mm. I would. You don't know week. Life's too short I to might. buy. <laughs> Life's too short happen. to drive a boring car. That's it. It is, isn't it? It is. Thank you for watching, guys, and we'll catch you for next week. Bye bye.